Hello YouTube and welcome to episode one of Tactics Tester here on the channel. I'm very, very excited to showcase to you today what we're going to be going through because this is a question I've been getting a lot, which is about the tactics that we use on stream in particular. And I want to do an episode on the tactic that I've done with Manchester United in particular. But this is a, a system that was pretty much... Not the meta, but was very, very overpowered in FM20. And I want to revisit it because we've had some really good success with it, with Billericay Town in our Twitch-only save, but also at Manchester United in the save over there. So what I've got is I've got four clubs here. We've got West Ham, Rennes, Milan, and Sevilla. So we've got an interesting stretch of teams. But this is the tactic. We've got Fabianski as a sweeper-keeper on defense. We've got Sufau, Zuma, Ogbonna, Creswell, but it's two wing-backs with two centre-backs on defend, a ball-winning midfielder, and a box-to-box midfielder we've gone with an inverted winger on attack and an inverted winger on support and then we've got a target forward and a pressing forward and for me these are the roles that i really want to pick apart in this shape so i'm not going to go into the tactic uh, actually we will so what we've got is we've got focus play down the wings we want to try and get it to the wingers but then we also want to try and work the ball into the box very quickly because we want the target men and the pressing forwards to get into those spaces but i don't have pass into space on because players start to derp out a little bit when you do that this is a very high pressing system and then we also play a, a, you know, a higher line and a much higher line we get stuck in and we use tighter marking for the set pieces I normally get the attacking midfielder from that side of the pitch to take. I don't know why it never saves this. If you've got, if anyone's got any way to save it so that the taker stays on it, mate, let me know in the comments because I do want this to to stay. But anyway, so what we've got here is we've got West Ham. We've got. I'll show you what the teams look like before I holiday away. We've got Rens who play a bit of a similar way, but this is a team that's not meant to be as good. Obviously, they've, they've lost Camavinga and he used to be someone that used to really help get Ren sort of up the ladder. The preview has us as six. So it'll be interesting to see how we go as six. And look at that. The Media 11 is just the whole BSG team. So we've obviously got a lot to do in League One with Rennes. We've got Milan, who I'm not a big fan of Giroud and Ibrahimovic up front in this system. So it'll be interesting to see how Ibrahimovic goes as the pressing forward. And then we've got Sevilla here, uh, who actually look quite good in this with the Compass and Papu Gomez there with Delaney and Rakitic. But what what does Rakitic look like as a box-to-box -box midfielder? He looks like he could play it because his physicals are actually surprisingly quite good. So he actually looks all right. So we'll be happy with that. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to holiday forward and you are going to see the results right now. Welcome back, YouTube. We are here with the results of our tactic test. But as you can see, we've got West Ham here taking on PSG in the Euro Cup final. But Unfortunately, we are not the manager of West Ham anymore. If we go and have a look at the manager, we lasted until the 15th of January until Brendan Rodgers took over. So let's have a look what happened here. We beat Norwich. We drew with Chelsea. We beat Leicester. We got smacked up there by Arsenal after going 1-0 up. And then we lost to Liverpool. We beat Locomotive. We drew with Man United. We lost in the Carabao Cup, which is fine. We drew with Burnley. We beat Olympia, of course. So up and down, up and down sort of season here. Premier League-wise, losing the Palace late against Michael Olise as well. Brentford, that's a pretty big loss there, 4-1. That's not what you want to see. But then here in November, decent stretch. But I think this is where the wheels sort of fell off these sort of games here. Uh, we got sacked on the 15th. So we got sacked after the Arsenal game here. We lost 2-0. We lost to Leicester 2-1, we drew 1-0, we lost 3-1 to Southampton, we lost 3-0 to Newcastle, and we lost 3-2 to Wolves after beating Everton and getting slapped up by Manchester City. So that was a bit disappointing. Then they've come through, they've gone from our 4-2-4, they've gone to a 4-2-3-1, where it's looked a little bit better for West Ham. Also with Rennes, is that Rennes? That, this is Rennes. Um, they finished ninth in the end. But let's focus on... Some of the teams that did well, so AC Milan, if we go competitions, we finished third and only finished three points behind Lazio, and we actually lost three more games, and we only drew four. So we could have really chased down Inter and Lazio. So we've qualified for the Champions League once again with uh, AC Milan, which is very, very positive. 
for average rating. So Theo Hernandez got 16 assists from left uh, wing back, which is very positive to see. Olivier Giroud scored 35 goals and got seven assists as the target forward and came second in the league for goals. Then Ibrahimovic comes up with 28 goals in 46 games. I feel like if we had an actual pressing forward, we may have done a bit better. Pellegri in his sort of games off the bench looked like he played quite well. Florenzi didn't play many games as well, but played well. Uh, Horgi would have played at right back, I reckon, with nine goals, seven assists. And Adil, I know these guys played at different clubs, sorry, they're on loan. And then it sort of fades away a little bit. Salamakers gets 12 goals and 16 assists. So for the assists, we get Hernandez and Salamakers and then Tanali from the midfield and Calabria probably from right back. And then the goals we've seen, Giroud and Ibra, but Raf Liao, who would have spent some time on the wing as Salamakers and Rebic all get double goals. Kessie actually getting eight and five from 37 games is impressive as well. But what I've sort of come to realize is I think this shape does work for teams that are going to be better than their opposition. So if I go team overview, let's have a look here. So we actually scored the most goals in the league. We scored 99 goals and only nine of them were from corners, which was impressive to be perfectly honest as well. Fewer shots against fifth, which I'm surprised about. Most shots for was us with miles. So we create a lot of chances in this game. Fewest conceded, we sit sixth. So, you know, not too bad. But obviously, if you're competing for the league, you don't want to be conceding 43 goals. I feel like, I mean, Lazio did concede 41, but I think you got to try and bring that back. Best pass completion, we were 89%, which isn't bad, but we are looking to be a bit more aggressive. Fewer shots against, we're there for fifth, which was impressive, and sixth for most dribbles. So let's have a quick look at our competitions. How did we go? We lost in the semi-final of the Italian Cup, and we got out of our Champions League group, which had, let's have a look here, profile, stages, can I see all groups? Group stage, all groups. And we topped our group with Ajax, Dortmund, and Lille. So I think I'd say with Milan, we had a bit of a dub with that season. I think we've done quite well. Uh, would have been nice to, to take the title home, but you know had the most goal difference there by one. I think maybe in order to improve this, you probably need a better pressing forward. Um, and then you're looking at Romagnoli, Kier, Calabria. The defense isn't amazing. Midfield's very good. Giroud really surprised me, to be perfectly honest. If we look at the, the stats here, Giroud with 28, but Chiro Immobile scored 45 league goals. That's not goals in general. For the whole year, he scored 55 goals. He'll probably win the Ballon d'Or. That's unbelievable from Chiro Immobile. <coughs> Pardon me. That's Ibrahimovic does get 24 as well. Hernandez is in there. Salamakers and Hernandez are there for the most assists with Kondreva. So very, very positive. But the big one, Sevilla, as you can probably tell, we have won the league by a country mile with Seville. So Sevilla have gone on and done some amazing things. Champions League is a bit disappointing. We lost three games. We lost 3-0 to Chelsea, and we lost twice to Salzburg. It would have been nice to get out of that group. I think we probably should have been good enough, especially if we're good enough to win the league. And then we lost in the first round to Napoli in the Europa League. So that was a bit disappointing. But it's all about the first division here where we've had the two top goal scorers. We've had the second and third highest rating and the most assists there by Alejandro Gomez, which is always nice to see. So what a season it was for Sevilla. Where we'll predict we'll predict the third in the end. So we've jumped the two Madrid teams, which is quite nice. But if we go stats, team overview, how did we go? Most goals. We broke. We absolutely killed La Liga for goals. Look at that. Barcelona second for 68. We got 102. Most points per game, obviously, it was us. Most shots for, it was us by quite a lot. Fewer shots against, though, we don't feature on this screen which shows one thing that i'm going to go through in a second most possession we're fifth which isn't too bad most clean sheet we're nowhere near there fewest conceded we're absolutely nowhere near there as well so this system is very very aggressive let's look at the average ratings rakitic was our best player according to the average ratings 13 and 16 from the box to box role then yusuf and, and nasiri 
with 30 goals for the season. And Rafa Mira, who I'd never really seen on FM, he looks very, very good as a 24-year-old ready-made striker. And I think he played as the target forward as well, which isn't his best role. So he did very, very well. Let's have a look at the goals for this season. So 39, 30, 13 from Rakitic, 12 from Acampos. And a few from Kunde as well, nine. So I wonder how many of those were from corners. And then for the assists, we didn't have the big, big numbers, but two guys with 16 and one with 13. And the Cunha at left back is very, very solid as well. So in in conclusion with this tactic, is it a good tactic? I think if you are one of the top dogs, I think you'd want to use this tactic as a way to absolutely dominate possession and really put your foot down. But if you are a mid-table predicted team, Maybe you need to go with something that brings this striker in there and play 4-3-3 and be a little bit more defensively solid because we've seen that it's not really ideal for those defensive uh, keeping clean sheets and not conceding goals. So if you've enjoyed this first tactics tester, make sure you smash the thumbs up button on it. Make sure you comment and subscribe. And in the comments, let me know what tactics you want to see in future videos. But for me, I've really enjoyed making this. So I'm very keen for episode two and I'll see you very soon for episode two of our tactics tester.